We are so happy to be back with Josh Powell. <laughs> we keep trying to have this show, and, and, and we're finally going to have it right now. Are you excited, I'm Josh? I'm excited. I'm excited, Jay. <laughs> He's the CEO Absolutely. of Revolution. And when we talk about Revolution, we talk about solar in Hawaii. We can talk about policy points and the future of solar and energy in Hawaii. Clean energy, if you will. In fact, this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. That's what we're calling this show. That's right. So, Josh, um, you know, I guess uh, just give me the depth and the breadth of, of Revolution. What is it? How big is it? What does it do? So, Revolution was uh, founded in, uh, on Oahu 10 years ago. This is our 10th year. Uh, we've installed about 7,000 systems island wide. Uh, we have operations currently, uh, Big Island. Oahu and a little bit of commercial activity on Maui. Uh, we've installed on most islands at this point. We also have uh, franchise branches headquartered here in Hawaii, started here in Hawaii, but franchise branches now on the mainland in two states, Idaho and Massachusetts. Massachusetts we've been in for about seven years. So so we've been, been, been at it for a while, a lot of experience, and uh, um, really feel like at this point we've been through a lot of the sort of technical changes and ups and downs in that solar markets can have and you know most exciting in the last few years as many people know Hawaii's really transition transitioned into a PV plus storage market which is really kind of what we we all at least in the industry I think it felt for a long time PV should have been from the very beginning it mm -hmm. creates the the resilience we I want did. yeah it creates the resilience we want it creates a complete independence it, it starts to deliver true sort of economic parity between uh, consumers and, and energy, you know, other energy producers like utilities and, and other private businesses. So, and then I think as we see the electrification of transportation, it just opens up everything. So really exciting, yeah. exciting time to be doing what we do. Exciting times, yeah. yeah. Well, I've always seen revolution as, as creative and innovative. You know, even from the very beginning when I, when I first started following you guys, uh, I noticed that you were doing things that nobody else was doing. You were figuring solutions to problems that nobody else was really able to solve. And I think it's still that way. And that means that you have a special obligation to, to, to show Hawaii's leadership in this area. And you are. You're going to the mainland. I mean, that's really something. You're taking your best practices to the mainland. And uh, that speaks volumes, actually. Um, so let's talk about the current, mm, the current direction, the current effort about solar in Hawaii, especially rooftop on single family, um, and I suppose small businesses as well. Where are we? We have a lot, we have a lot of people have adopted. They've, they've gotten into it already. Um, they probably did not, most of them did not put storage there. And the issue is, um, you know, uh, how can we get them to do that? Um, and then, of course, is the, the not so low hanging fruit, the people who should uh, do it for purposes of resilience and uh, and reliability and hardening uh, against uh, extreme weather and the like, failure of the grid. Um, and so the question is, uh, how do we make it more attractive to them so the less than low-hanging fruit will come around and also install both solar and storage at the same time? So complete the picture, move the needle ahead, right. you know, get to 100% you know, through, this, through this particular approach. Uh, so uh, first talk about um, the people who already have solar, what's their situation? Uh, how, do you, how do you move them to add storage? So, you know, 30 plus thousand systems out there, probably close to 40,000 systems out there that are grid-tied PV systems without, uh, without storage. And, um, you know, an amazing asset when you think about it in terms of uh, producing energy, um, but but uh, that much more beneficial to both the users and the state if, if storage is integrated. And, you know, I think, you know, the legislature's tried a few times to, to sponsor uh, or various folks in the legislature tried to sponsor various bills to incentivize storage adoption um, and, and do it, you know, with or without uh, associated PV. Um, I think if the state looks at it just from a resilience point of view, there's some pretty strong incentives. If we think about some of the costs associated with energy restoration after a storm, uh, volcanic eruption, uh, you know, the mobility particularly of, of uh, uh, PV plus storage at the residential level and, and how it sort of 
drives into the community and creates nodes of resilience. Um, you know, I think there's lots of benefits beyond the sort of normal economic assessment we make with, with photovoltaics in Hawaii. Mm. Um, and that's always been the big driver. I think one of the really exciting things to us as a business, you know, you, you talked about innovation. I think a lot of our innovation has been uh, creativity that sort of responds to and is inspired by what consumers want and really, you know, listening to what, what the consumers want in our market. Um, it's surprising how much wisdom there is locked up in that. And the Hawaii PV market really started with a, a big economic gap between, you know, the cost of retail energy and, and what you could do for yourself. And, but, but as you start to own your own energy production, and really own both ends of it. You know, storage gives you the nighttime durability and resilience. Then you a whole whole new array of things open up from for consumers in terms of opportunities. Whether it's transportation energy, you know, I mean, resilience. Charging your car. Yeah, trans so charging your car, resilience. You know, lots of different values start to come into play. And so it's it's economics, but you think about it like any other uh, consumer product. We have you know you know we don't just buy a home because it's cheaper than everything else. You know, we, we have lots of things that factor into how we make those decisions. And, um, and so, you know, really learning what that is, what's of value to consumers. And I, really in the, in the energy market today, in the distributed energy market, we're learning right now what, what consumers want and what they respond to. We found as a business that, uh, you know, we can provide other services in addition to, to energy. Um, because they kind of are parallel to like what? Oh, we you know we started uh, air conditioning contracting three years ago. I mean, in, in many ways, you could say that's sort of one part climate change. Well, that's a lot to do with it. Hawaii's gotten hotter. Yeah. So we have a lot of customers that are asking about it and, and interested in it. Um, and it obviously, you know, efficient air conditioning and efficient homes uh, has a lot to do with your energy budget. So, so that you know has driven us into areas like that. Also, it's a good way to stabilize when, when, a, when, when the energy market can go up and down. You have other things you can fall back on. Roofing, another one. You know, most of our systems sit on a rooftop. So we got a roofing license. And, and that includes putting those brackets on the absolutely. roof so it won't fly away. Make, making sure... That's worth the, the price of eggs right there. You know, you, you, know, you bring up uh, one of my favorite topics, uh, uh, you know, I'm a I'm an architect. I'm a licensed architect in the state of Hawaii, and and uh, um, when I look at PV, there's an opportunity when you're applying panels to a rooftop to actually make it stronger. So if you're using uh, you know a, a, a adequate rail system uh, or a rail system that's actually strong in and of itself, and and the modules are tied to it in a way that you can actually create you know essentially a shear diaphragm, an additional one on the roof. And you know it's something we think is a differentiator, but those little bits of technology uh, can make a big difference. And you know, for some of our single wall homes, having a little bit stronger roof could could make the difference in in a you know in a in a hurricane or some other kind of storm. Well, if you assume that we're going to have a extreme weather, and uh, some roofs that are not tied down are going to fly across the street and damage somebody, it's in it, it's in community interest to. To make sure that the roof is uh, is tied down, and, and and so much so that you know one of the points that I would raise is that, you know, existing solar panels uh, that were put on five ten years ago because that's the time frame we're in already maybe yeah. fifteen years ago, um, they may not be anchored the same way you would anchor a solar panel today. Oh yeah, when we started in the industry, uh, you know. A decade ago, I was coming out of. Uh, I started my career as a naval officer. Was in, in uh, the civil engineer corps, the construction side of the navy, and moved into professional sort of general contracting construction. And uh, looked at the solar industry with my partners. And you know, one of the things that we saw was there there wasn't much professionalization of the construction business in solar. Most of it was pretty simple. You know, people that had been at it for a while, but self-taught. So you saw some applications, like you'd see uh, people screwing things directly into a roof, maybe with just some, some silicone. Trouble, isn't it? Yeah, they, you know, so, so 
we've seen over the last decade, those practices have pretty much left the market. Like, those don't really exist. If you've got systems older than 10 years, you, you might find some of those sure. things we've still. We've learned a lot. We, we, find collect, we find solar hot water collectors still that are direct screwed into a roof sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what I'm thinking, though, is that if we look today and we are interested in uh, reliability and hardening against the extreme weather, we want to identify those installations that need to be re, re, reattached. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that if I called you one day and I said, take a look at my, my old installation, can you yeah, we do improve that. it? You, yeah. would, you would do that yeah. and you would probably help me with my roof in general. Um, but there's a lot of people who won't do that. They won't do that. They won't, they won't call you and they won't do anything. And it'll, it'll be a danger, not only to the supply of electricity for their system, but for the neighbor across the street when the thing flies off. And, and I wonder if you have any ideas about how the government, uh, you know, weather, <laughs> first weather, and how the government could actually make sure that people um, take a look. You know, in my car, I have to take it in for a safety inspection once a year. It's not only to protect me, it's to protect the other cars on the road that my car is, you know, working in certain ways. Um, but isn't, doesn't the same rule of community, community mm, mm, uh, stability you inspection know, uh, apply yeah, for, for uh, solar? For, for sure. And I mean, a PV system as it stands on Oahu gets a electrical and a building inspection. So, um, and... You know, they definitely, they get out there, they look at systems, um, both sides, and the building side is looking specifically at the racking, whether the, the you know, there's, there's offsets for how close the system should be to ventilation, things like that. And so they're looking at that. And I think um, at least in the last decade or so, um, I, you know, I know DPP's caught in a lot of flack recently from some contractors in, in, in terms of speed of of plan review, things like that. But I, you know, I don't feel like uh, there's a lack of inspection on, on PV systems today. I think it's fairly comprehensive. Um, and that's a good thing. I mean, there's a lot of inspectors out there. I, I do think when you go back, so, some of these things were unfamiliar, you know, eight to 10 years ago and, and, and earlier. And, uh, you, you know, whether it's the consumer contacting somebody to go look at it, uh, we certainly do that. Uh, we just have a flat rate to inspect an existing oh, you system. Do. Yeah. Oh, that's, see, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we do, a, very good. we do a, a $250 inspection for any existing system. And then if there's like repairs or something, if, if we make recommendations and the, and the customer wants us to do stuff, we credit it back to. You've got to do that. It's not work. only for efficiency, yeah. but it, it's for we, we actually well, end keeping up doing, the whole thing we, in place. We, we do more of that for realtor, realtors. So when, you're, when oh. realtors are in a transaction, they'll call us. We'll go inspect oh, the existing sure. system, give them some sense of, of what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, because if, I, if I'm yeah. a buyer of a, of a yeah. residence, I want to uh, know it's the in... seller's going to say to me, look, Jay, we got this great system on the roof. And I say, yeah, let's how see how great it is. Right. You know, <laughs> I, if I'm going to have a soil inspection, I'm going to have a termite inspection, I'm going to have a roof inspection. No, too. You know, Jay, and I think, I mean, you mentioned like some companies do, and, and you know, we saw, uh, you know, the, 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 PV companies that are left on Oahu today have been through, most of them at least, have been through a couple cycles in this market. And in you know, 2012, 2013, there were, I think, up to 240, um, some, some kind of crazy numbers. Uh, and um, we've seen that number go down to, I think we're probably 30 or 40 that are still actively in business. And You expected that, though. I it's think a so. Consolidation we knew, we, period. Sure, yeah. we. I think we expect we expected that. Uh, you know, we had companies coming from, you know, all sorts of companies from the mainland. We're, we're and we're moving. I'd say we're moving into another period of, of, fairly, uh, heavy installation. And we have a tax credit, a federal tax credit that's going to step down at the end of this year. So, those kinds of things can can motivate the market, and we might see some other mainland companies kind of jump in again, um, but. You know, we, I think any company that's really lasted, and our, certainly we, we count ourselves in this, in this group, you, you know, you're not, you got to be looking at more than just the energy system. It's, it's you know, one, I'm, I'm providing something that, that uh, you know, the customer is going to have for 20 plus years. The useful life is actually well more than 20 years. In many ways, it's the yeah. heart of the house. Yeah, most of the systems we sell today have a, 
a power warranty that's 25 years. Some, some of them have product warranties that last that long. Um, so it's a, you know, a long-term, durable thing. We want to make sure we're there to maintain it. Um, you know, we've come up with, over the, over the years, financing programs for some of our systems. So we, one of the first companies in, in the country, really. I remember that. that. We, in, we, we introduced about three years ago. That PV, was very important. PV to, plus to, storage. To making yeah. it available to every, yeah. access to the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. What, what's called third-party ownership. Yeah. Uh, so we're the only local company that, that self-sponsors that. And but you're still doing the maintenance. It's still yeah. relevant yeah. doing yeah, the Yeah, we do it for the life of the system. If I'm a buyer, I mean, if I'm one of your customers... Uh, I'm, I feel better if I know you're going you're gonna to yeah. stand behind it over yep. the years. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you, it's almost like a utility contract. You're in a 20-year arrangement. It's a flat monthly fee for your energy. Yeah. We maintain it for the life of the system. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, we want to make sure we're around. So, you know, bricks and mortar. You know, we have, we have a, an accessible uh, showroom for customers. We have other products like that we sell. Street, yeah. Right. <laughs> but those kinds of, I think, the getting into... You know, I, I tend to think of our business, and this is also, you know, in the industry itself on the mainland, you, you hear these terms a little bit. You know, we talk about energy services businesses and, and home services businesses. And really, that's what Revolution is today is we're a home services business. Yeah. There's ancillary products we provide. And the point is, you know, I've already developed this trusted energy relations, re relationship with my customer. And once they trust us, I mean, what else can we do that's going to be beneficiary? Sure. So. It's, like, it's like any contractor, you know, develops a piece of the house. He adopts yeah. the house. He becomes your uncle or the yep. uncle of the house. Um, uh, after this break, Josh, <laughs> I, I, would like to, I would like to talk to you about storage and where it fits yeah. in all of this and what the, um, the state of the law is or maybe should be going forward, given how well, important it is. Well, storage is the center of it all, right? Yeah, we, right, right. I agree. Let's take a short break. We'll be back with Josh Powell, CEO of Revolution. Sun. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, Let's take healthy back. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up and please follow us we're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Okay, we're back talking energy. Hawaii, the state of clean energy with Josh Powell. He's the CEO of Revolution. Sun. So, Josh, I wanted to get into this, uh, you know, something you mentioned earlier, namely storage. Storage has taken a, a, a centerpiece role uh, in clean energy in Hawaii and, and in, the, in the country, I'm sure, because we are, we are leaders. We are. Okay. Absolutely. So where are we in, st in storage? Because storage has now come of age, don't yeah. you think, technologically? Yeah, so this is, a, this is a shorter part of the story because there wasn't much going on the first seven years we were in business in terms of grid-tied storage. Most of the, the PV integrated storage we think about would be some guy with a, a house maybe in a remote area with some lead-acid batteries that they managed. And, you know, what's happened in the last three years is uh, HECO changed some rules that uh, essentially made exporting PV energy not economically valuable. Um, and technology converged at the same time to reduce the price of lithium ion storage and improve the technology that we use to deliver it. And mm -hmm. so those three things coming together in the last three years, we moved from essentially no grid tied batteries to today, almost 100% of residential systems have a grid tied battery. And so and most of that is because it's economically beneficial. So, you know, in Hawaii today, you're still going to save 20 to 30 percent on your energy bill with uh, a Tesla Powerwall or some other kind of storage integrated into your PV system. And so that's a, you know, for anybody buying a new system, that's great. And in many ways, like if you waited, you're kind of lucky because now you're getting these Better great technology. systems that are all tied in, yeah. whereas if you got it a few years ago, 
you probably, you know, you don't have as much of an economic reason to get a battery. Um, you, you, you're probably still saving a lot on energy. But, you know, so that, that market transition is actually, you know, it's really unique. It, you know, Hawaii has gone through something that probably most other consumer energy markets will go through at some time in the next, say, 20 years. But we've just gone through it in the last three, and we're really, we're kind of out the other side. Um, you know, three years ago, I wasn't sure where this was going to go. We kind of had made our bets as a business on it, and, and we'd been putting a lot of money into studying different batteries, testing different batteries, mostly testing it on ourselves. Got a lot of junk that I wish I didn't have. <laughs> Fortunately, not on consumers' uh, homes, but as products entered the market in the last couple of years, we've seen a couple of manufacturers really rise to the top and deliver really great products. And um, the reliability, you know, you basically can control the product on your iPhone or your, your smartphone, uh, just an app controlled system. They're land based. So in the event of a power outage or a communication outage, it still works at your home. Mm. It's got its own wireless oh, signal. Sure, yeah, yeah. So intelligent, just like an automated car. Yeah. Um, it's no surprise that we see Tesla sort of leading the charge on some of that because yeah. they're so far they're so far in that technology already yeah. with the cars. So um, we we see higher adoption in Hawaii than any other place in the country. And there's only a couple other places in the world that are that are really close to what we're doing. Germany and Australia have have some interesting markets too. Um, so I think I think anyone getting a brand new uh, solar rooftop system now would include you're going to get a battery it, it, yeah. i mean storage it would yeah. not it would, it would not be reasonable not be any any any, not any consumer that. so a residential residential homeowner single family condominium you're absolutely going to see that when you get into the business side it's not as as because they're closed at night yeah so businesses tend to operate when the sun is shining so the battery isn't as significant for a business homeowners tend to operate when the sun isn't shining sure, sure, so sure. the battery gets really important so we see almost 100% with, uh, with the homeowners. With businesses, it's probably more like 40 to 50%. But home, home, you would be surprised if a homeowner came to you and said, just give me solar, forget about the storage. I would actually really look closely at what they're asking for because I don't want them to go away unhappy. And, yeah. and one of our concerns would be they'd be putting a PV system on that would just get curtailed. It would just wouldn't right. produce energy because they wouldn't be there to use right. it. Right. You've right. got to use the energy right when it's being produced. So I have a thought it. now. You know, if you put in a new system, brand new system with solar and you know, b battery included, um, seems to me that would be easier in terms of the installation and the integration of the equipment than if you came around and added a battery to an existing solar cell. Am I right? You know, I mean, there's a there's certainly a convenience and a scale to that. Um, the 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 there's two different types of batteries. I don't want to get too deep in the well, weeds on ahead. technology. Go, go ahead. We We're into technology. DC yeah. coupled battery systems and AC coupled battery systems, and most battery systems are still DC coupled. And DC coupled has the the good thing about DC coupled is we got DC energy, direct current energy coming off the roof with the PV pan most PV panels, and so. Uh, it's it's more efficient to store it, less less cycling, less loss of energy. Mm. Um, in comparison, you know, a coal-fired power plant like AES's plant loses, you know, sixty percent of its potential energy in combustion, and another thirty or forty percent in line loss as it's distributed. Solar energy. Forget about carbon into yeah. the atmosphere. So so a, <laughs> a, a DC right a DC battery versus an AC battery or AC coupled battery, you might have a you know, seven to ten percent difference in terms of energy that you're retaining in the, in the vessel. Um, now, the advantage of an AC coupled battery is it's essentially an appliance. You know, you're plugging it into an existing system. Uh, you know, you need a, an interface that can disconnect you from the grid. But other than that, it, it's really not that complicated. Um, and so, you know, Tesla again innovated in the marketplace by delivering sort of a consumer level AC coupled battery about two years ago, and that, that really turned out to be the right thing to scale. Mm -hmm. This is the one they use in Kauai, KIUC, right? The so installation you're, you think Tesla. that's a power pack. That's mm -hmm. their big industrial battery. Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about is a power wall. It's a kind of cuter, cuter version. And you smaller. can hang it on the side yeah. of the house. It's hang not that big. Exactly. And it's exactly. scalable. You can have as many as you want to, to yep. meet the need. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, uh, you know, the other thing I was going to ask you about that is, um, is when, when, you're, when you're doing it with um, an existing solar 
system. Uh, can you put these n new batteries on there? Do you have to change out other equipment in order to connect them? No, and and I mean that's the PUC is actually for the last couple of years. We, we, what you're talking about is essentially what we call a NEM plus or adding on to a NEM system and a net metered system, like what most people would already have on their homes if they already have pre-existing PV. And, it, and over the last 18 months, the PUC and the solar uh, community and HECO kind of gone back and forth about the rules to do that. And, and in, the, in the last couple months, those rules finally came out. They're pretty straightforward. Um, you don't have to change out old inverters. You might want to. There's, there could be other reasons you want to do that. Because the technology has moved just ahead. To, just yeah. to update the, the tech. Yeah. Um, but you don't really have to do that. It is, it's not uncomplicated because you... You do need to think about how is this existing PV system or how much of this existing PV system is going to support the battery in an off-grid mode. If I just wanted a battery that would just support my house and not charge from solar, that's really easy. If I want to integrate that old system into the battery, that means I'm going to be moving some things around, so there's going to be some electrical work. Mm -hmm. But it's not... It's not uh, super complicated. But, but this is a kind of analysis you have to make when yeah. you do that. Every system, in that sense, there's some customization. you got to look at what's there yeah. and, and then decide which parts are going to move to the PD. Now, with all the storage available, I mean, we're all, all of this is going toward storage connected with batteries. Um, what, about, you know, what about the idea of connecting to the grid? Um, you know, connecting to the grid sounds to me like a resilience, uh, oh, resiliency yeah. question. I, I wouldn't want to not be connected because if anything went wrong, I wouldn't have any options uh, after a bad storm that, for example, tore it off my roof, uh, although even, we, even though we screwed it down really well. Um, and so my question to you is, uh, do you ever suggest to people that they be independent of the grid? Well, or do you always suggest that they, they connect? So the vast majority of the installations we do are grid tied. Um, we do, we do and, ha and have done off-grid systems. And we've had a, you know, a very small number of customers essentially leave the grid. Um, I, you know, we don't try to persuade people one way or the other. I think the grid is a huge resource, and it makes a lot of sense to continue to be interactive with the grid. What I, what I think is happening and what's really important to recognize is that as the consumer gets their own energy system and as they get a storage system, they come into, you know, it's like the relationship with the grid manager, the utility, whoever's been producing energy has been heavily one-sided. Like, you want the energy, you don't have any real control over pricing, when you use it, you know, and what that's shifting. That's coming into balance. And so... What really has to happen is that has to be recognized. Now, the, the, the distributed batteries that are out there on homes are potentially a massive resource to the grid. We installed 10 megawatt hours of batteries last year on residential homes. That's a, that's a big resource that could be tapped into to push and pull electrons when uh, the utility wants to produce something. Maybe they have a cheap time period or they have an excess because it takes time to spin up and down. So it's more flexibility for the, uh, the yeah, individual and these homeowner. Yeah, and these are digital. So the controls are, are all digitized, very easy to communicate with, very easy to control. Um, now, there's some permissions if the consumer owns it, you, you know, and that's where the parity comes into place. Now, it becomes potentially transactional, right? Okay, I'm going to let HECO use my battery for so much time a year <coughs> or a day, but there's a price to pay for that. Okay, but yeah. that's where it's going, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Everything balanced, yeah. I think if we're going to have a utility, and if we're going to have a grid, it's absolutely going to have to go that way. One other thing is if I, if I have my electric car, and everybody does, and in fact we need to have more of that, um, you know, I, I, I probably want a charger at home. I'd like yeah. a fast charger for that matter. Gas station in your house without the gas. Right. A beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and enough, enough to charge me up every night to get in Hawaii anyway, anywhere yep. in Hawaii, where I want to go. My wife drives a car <clears throat> purely powered by solar today. So if I tell you that, if I tell you I either have a car or want a car, electric car in my home, how does that change the configuration of the system? I mean, we have inverters right now that have charging ports attached to them. So, you know, you can have that, that as just right? like a, just like almost like an accessory to your PV Even system. fast charging ports. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So um, we install uh, different chargers for customers based on what they want. Level one, two, three. Um, it's all amperage. I mean, it's just moving some loads around, but um, we're seeing these technologies come closer and closer together. Um, and uh, I mean, like a, we have an inverter that we sell that 
a company called Solar Edge has a basically an integration, and you just you just plug the you pay a little bit you know slightly more for that's that great, inverter, yeah. and you can just attach a pigtail to it and charge your car. That's great. That's sitting great. Sitting right that's there really, in the garage, and that's an incentive to buy an electric car. I, one other thing I wanted to ask you to talk about incentives is the is the tax credit. Uh, right now, we have a tax credit on the installation what of solar alone or solar and battery, right. brand new. But we don't have a tax credit just for batteries. on just for batteries, which seems to me uh, in the old vernacular silly. Um, on resilience alone, yeah. Like you, can, I mean, you know, you can imagine a, 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 you know, let's let's go a year down the road. You know, we've got a, a severe weather. Let's say this summer we end up, you know, I hope it doesn't happen. But if, if, if we end up getting getting uh, hit with a hurricane, we've seen it on the Big Island. We've seen it in other parts of, of Hawaii. In retrospect, we will be kicking ourselves for not doing everything we could to put batteries in as many homes as possible. And, I, you know, Hawaii, Ohana, and our neighborhoods are, are really important. I know that... You know, when stuff like that happens, you're going to have people sharing. You're going to have extension cords running from houses that have batteries to houses <laughs> that don't, plugging in the refrigerator, all those things. So the more we have, the better. Yeah. You know, there's already a couple thousand out there, and that's great. You know, that'll be a big help. I mean, in Puerto Rico, in contrast, when we saw, uh, I think, Hurricane Maria, uh, you know, you didn't have very much in the community. It obliterated everything. Um, and people were really struggling for several months. So you can avoid, I think, a lot of that by putting the resilience out there now. So um, you've already really uh, revealed what uh, I was looking for, but um, I, I wonder if you could address the legislature. Uh, they're right behind camera four, all of them, <laughs> hundreds of them. They're all listening to you. I wonder if you could give them some advice about the bill that is presently pending that would allow a tax credit for uh, upgrade to include batteries on, on home storage. Yeah, it's it's a no-brainer, but don't leave PV behind. I think, you know, Hawaii has this amazingly unique opportunity where we lead the nation in many ways the world in these kinds of technologies, and really uh, the state has an opportunity to support that. And then the state has done a lot with the, the 2045 initiative, 100%. Um, if we're going to get there, we have to push things along. And I think the benefits that come back to us in terms of research at UH, integration with other global economies, they're, they're hard to put a price tag on, really. And, um, you know, in many ways, the state incentive for PV has gotten us, you know, at some level yeah. where we are. Yeah. Um, important changes in that over the years have, have cr helped to stabilize and create a really strong PV market in Hawaii. And... You know, I look at it like there's no turning back. This, yeah. this is where we're going. The faster we get there, the better. And the faster, it, it has to be seen in light of the fact that this is an El Nino year. Yeah. And we are more and more likely to have extreme weather, and this is a hedge against extreme and, weather. And how often, you know, El Nino, when I was a kid, was every eight to ten years. Today, El Nino is happening every three to four years yeah. or, sh or sooner. We just yeah. been, went through a two-year warming cycle in yeah, the Pacific. Yeah, yeah. So, There's no time to waste. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, thanks, Josh Jay. Powell, Revolution. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thanks for coming down. Thank you.